In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the 3ds Max user interface. Uh, so when you first open up 3ds Max, this is the window you'll see. Um, over here, we have a bunch of different beginner tutorial movies, um, about a minute long each. Probably won't be too useful for um, our style of animation, so we're just going to close this. Um, what you'll first notice is there's a lot of stuff going on, so what I'm going to show you is just what you need to know to do technical animations. So first up here in all these little drop down tabs, the only one we will actually use is going to be in the rendering tab and that's going to be at the end. Um, so don't worry about that. We might get into the graph editors a little bit. Um, again, that'll be later. So now in these, uh, all these little icons here, uh, the ones that are going to be important to us are this, um, the linking button, which will help us link motions together and link objects together. So when one moves a certain way, the others will move with it, depending on how we link. And then we have these two we're probably going to use the most, which is the move and rotate. We also have a scale command, which we won't use, but... Um, you can use just the same as the, the move and rotate commands. Um, this drop down will become important when we do robotic animation. This basically sets the coordinate system um, to a certain reference. So normally the default would be the view. So down here we have a little view coordinate system. Uh, what we're going to do when we do robotic animation is we're going to have to change this to local. So what that'll do is change the coordinate system when we want to move an object or rotate an object. It'll change the coordinate system to the object's coordinate system. So the next important icon up here that we're going to be using is the material editor, which will allow us to add and edit materials um, so we can make our, our renders more realistic. And then we have our render setup, which will help set up our, the different renders and um, set up our animation a little bit. And then the last button right here is render production. So when everything's all ready, we can click that button and it'll do a render for us. Over to the right here is the command panel, which we'll be using extensively when we create our animations. This has a few tabs I'll run through real quick. The first tab is the Create tab, which we can use to create some standard primitive objects. Um, so in case we need, let's say, a box, we can create a box just like that. And there's a few other shapes we can play around with. Uh, what we'll use this tab for mostly will be adding our lights and cameras later when we do our animations. The next tab we have is the Modify tab, which will let us add modifiers to our objects if we need to deform the object in any way. Uh, we won't be doing that for this tutorial, but in case you need to add a modifier, that's where that can be found. The next tab, which we will be using, is the Hierarchy tab. We'll be using this tab quite a bit when we set up the forward kinematics needed to animate uh, robots. And the last tab we'll be using is the Motion tab. This tab is used to control the trajectories of our objects after they've been keyframed for animation. So in here we can add different controllers that will make the objects move differently for the same animation. Down at the bottom here we have all of our controls we'll use to create our animation and we have all of the different controls for viewing our objects. So right here we have our timeline, which will be useful after we've created our keyframes to run through our different animations. And then we have our keyframe controls right here, set key, auto key, and then our big master key. And then our different playback buttons. And then this panel over to the right has our various view controls, which you can hover over to read what they do and play around with. The one we'll use the most is in the bottom right corner, which is Maximize Viewport Toggle. So what that'll do is switch between one and four windows in the viewport that we can see our object in. So now when we have 
four windows. Each one we can control separately. So in this one we are given a perspective view that's realistic shading. And then in this one we have a front view with wireframe. So let's say we wanted to change that to a back view and to shaded or hidden line. You can just play around with uh, different settings, whatever you're more comfortable with, whatever helps you visualize the best, that's what these are for. Um, so that's a personal preference. And then in the upper right of each window is the view cube, which you can use um, to move around your objects to help you see better. So even though in this one we have a back view, we can still rotate and now this changes to orthographic. So now if we want to get back to our back, back view, we can change that in here, or we can just click on the back face of our view cube. And then if you have a mouse with a center scroll wheel, scrolling in and out will let you zoom. And then if you click the scroll wheel down and move the mouse around, that will let you pan. Um, so then if we want to maximize any other window. What you want to do is click the window and you'll see it highlighted in yellow and that'll be your active window. And then you go back down to the lower right maximize viewport toggle and whichever window is activated that's what will return to your single window. In case you want to change the default view configuration you can come down here to the bottom right and right click anywhere inside this box and you get a pop out window. Inside here you can click layout and then choose from a variety of different more custom layouts. That covers all the basic user interface features we need to get started so in the next video we'll start doing some basic animations.